Hello there, my gummy knights, and welcome back to Echo Chamber. Now, getting back into what if Krillin trained with King Kai after being killed by Tamarine. I highly recommend you go and watch part one to get an understanding as to what's going on in this story, so this way you will not be confused or get lost going forward. But to do a quick recap, Krillin, after being killed by Tamarine, was given an offer to train under King Kai. He accepted growing stronger as a result. Three years later, he reunites with the rest of the Z team, who also train in preparation not only for the 23rd Tenkaichi Budokai, but also in order to deal with the threat of Piccolo Jr. We pick up with this story right now. Took a L, but tonight I bounce back. Wake up every morning, by the night I count stacks. Do that ass was real when I hit it, bounce back. Alright, getting back into this story, I actually want to start off this part by showcasing some power levels. That way you guys can see where Krillin, Goku, and the other Z Fighters, and even Piccolo stand, not only in conjunction with their original counterparts, but also with each other in this new timeline. So here we go. Starting off with our Golden Boy Krillin himself, he stands at a staggering power level of 1344. In other words, 1344. And that's without using Kaioken, mind you. Followed by Goku with a high power level of 520. Now keep in mind, this is why he's suppressed. On to the next one, who surprisingly ends up being Kami, with the power level of 480. This is due to him not only wanting to increase his own power, but also out of necessity in order to keep up with Goku during training. Rounding us out, we have Piccolo, who had basically the same amount of power he did during canon, which would be around 325, the end at 290, Yantra at 240, and finally Chaozu at 180. Now, where she's not technically a part of the Z team, I still want to include Chi Chi, who who also did not change from canon and is still at a power level of around 130. And uh, let's be real here, no offense to all the fans of him out there, but Yajirobe, at least in this arc, is kinda irrelevant. Of course, moving on to the tournament itself, I'm going to say everything pretty much stays the same for that first half. Chaozu still fixes the numbers for the match selection, and I would say the only real difference here is that everyone wins their matches easier than they did in canon. Moving right along, we still get the same matches for the quarterfinal here as we did in canon. So Tao versus Tien, which ends up being a total wash in Tien's favor. Him being actually a bit stronger here than he was in canon makes his beat down of Tao as revenge for Chaozu a bit more brutal than it was originally. Next up we have Goku versus Chi Chi or aka Anonymous. This pretty much still goes as normal too, the only real change being that Goku has an easier time dodging her attacks and knocks her out more quickly than he did in canon. And yes, they do still end up finding out who she is and Goku's promised her, basically setting up a marriage that will take place after the tournament. And with that out of the way, we move on to the third match of Krillin vs Piccolo, where we finally get a significant change in the story. As two combatants head to the stage, Piccolo couldn't help but think to himself what a waste of time this would be. Although he couldn't quite sense it, he still knew there was something off about this human, yet he just couldn't put his finger on it. But rather than dwell on that, he put the thought out of his head for now, as he was far more focused on having his match with Goku later. But little did he know he was in for the shock of his life. As he and Krillin faced each other in the arena, Krillin was the only one getting into his stance. He noticed that Piccolo was in fact completely off guard, not even remotely taking this fight nor Krillin seriously. Even after the announcer gave the okay to begin, Piccolo still refused to take a defensive position. Krillin inquires, Hey, what's the matter? The fight's already started. Are you gonna come at me or what? Or should I make the first move? Piccolo was perplexed by this. He paused for a moment before bursting out laughing. <laughs> what was that, insect? Are you stupid or something? Damn human. What makes you think I would ever waste my time on the likes of you? Listen here, shorty. The best option for you right now is to give up, you hear? Get out of the ring and go hide in a hole somewhere. Not that it'll do you much good in the long run. It's simple, really. You did adequately to make it this far. But this is where your luck runs out. So go on and get, and make way for the real fighters. My target as of now is Goku, and once I'm done with him, I'll make sure to finish off his little friends too. Piccolo finishes his arrogance on full display as he crosses his arms, standing proudly in the belief that he's already won this battle with just his words alone. However, the exact opposite happens, as Krillin sighs before retorting, Wow, a beautiful speech, really. Guess the apple doesn't fall too far after all. Although, it does get me wondering about something. Hmm? And what would that be? Krillin, now sporting a devious smile, continues. Oh, I was just wondering what's gonna happen to all that bravado once I've knocked you flat on your ass. Piccolo gasps, looking shocked. In fact, he erupts in anger, screaming out, How dare! But Krillin interrupts before he can finish. Let me make this simple for you, Junior. All your posturing and grandstanding doesn't mean a damn thing to me. I had expectations of you, too. And I gotta say, I'm disappointed. 
That being said, I didn't come here to chit-chat about like schoolgirls. I came to fight. Unless your plan was to bore me to death, in which case, it's working. However, Piccolo, on the other hand, was completely enraged, rooting his teeth hard and clenching his fists so tightly, in fact, that his nails bore into his skin, causing blood to drip from his hand. He could only think to himself, How dare this disgusting lonely bug think that he could mock me like this? Before screaming out in pure hatred directly towards Krillin, DIE! Charging full force towards him, cocking his fists back, charging quite a lot of power into a punch that he was sure would kill the human in one blow. Thinking once again to himself that this is what he gets for insulting the king of the demons. But alas, his punch would actually never land, as Krillin easily dodged it, sidestepping and moving fast. Too fast for Piccolo to even remotely react to, leaving over his arm and doing a spinning kick, slamming his foot right into Piccolo's cheek, sending him flying hard towards the out of bounds, completely again shocking everyone. Piccolo, on the other hand, was completely blindsided by the kick. In fact, it had actually knocked him out, which was clear as he went flying. But lucky for him, he managed to regain consciousness at the last second and avoid being wrung out. Landing back down to the ring, he immediately falls down to one knee, huffing and puffing quite heavily as he struggled to catch his breath. Grabbing hold of the part of his face where he was kicked, noticing that blood had begun to trickle down his chin. He was shocked and completely in disbelief that a low-level insect was able not only to overpower him, but injure him as well. Looking at the martial artist, he only saw him smiling, with an expression to say as though, Heh, <laughs> you're too weak to beat me. This thought angered Piccolo even more. He visibly showed his hatred, as noted by a pronounced vein along his forehead. But eventually he was able to calm himself down, thinking that he was getting too worked up and that the only reason that he got hit was due to him letting his guard down, having underestimated his opponent. But not to worry, he thought to himself. It won't happen again. Standing there looking notably calmer, he chuckled saying, So human, it seems I've misjudged you, but don't get too cocky just because you got a lucky shot. I dropped my guard is all, but I'm through playing games. This time, I'll crush you. Oh, uh, really? Krillin countered. And by all means, show me what you can do. Gladly. Piccolo then removed his weighted clothes, exposing his true identity for all to see, and taking a charging stance as he began to power up, his energy growing as his power began to shake the whole arena as lightning and thunder roared in the skies. Yet, Krillin remained unfazed, only commenting when Piccolo finished that he had great power and asking him not to waste it. Piccolo smirk holding out his arm, his hand stretched wide as a large amount of key swelled up in his palm. Take this! He yelled before firing off, a demon explosive way directly at Krillin. But unfortunately for Piccolo, Krillin acted quickly and held out both of his hands putting up a protective key barrier, which did indeed work as intended, blocking off the blast, but in turn it created a large smoke screen, allowing Piccolo to speed behind Krillin in an attempt to attack him, but Krillin saw right through his plan. Sensing him coming behind, he dodged his downward axe chop, then flying into the air as Piccolo gave chase. Eventually Piccolo was able to catch up, reaching him and he began to throw out a fury of punches and kicks, in rapid succession, a combination. But unfortunately, this was also ineffective against Krillin, as he effortlessly dodged, parried, or blocked all of Piccolo's strikes. Still, Piccolo persisted, continuing to attack him, yet he couldn't lay a finger on him. And despite the rage boiling up inside of him, he did his best to push forward. Though as time began to pass, it was becoming clear that he was getting nowhere. So backing off of his attack and gaining some distance, he attempts a telekinetic binding, grasping Krillin and freezing him in place. He then charges up another massive key wave, ignoring the heavy drain it was having on him. Because simply put, at this point, he wanted to see nothing more than Krillin dead. And thus, he fired this massive blast towards him. But like everything else so far, it too was ineffective, as Krillin broke out of the binding with raw power alone and kicked the blast into the air, deflecting it. Piccolo flew towards him, trying out another punch, but that too missed. As Krillin flew higher and higher, getting above Piccolo. But Piccolo quickly looked upward as to not lose sight of him. However, as soon as he did, Krillin used a solar flare, binding Piccolo, distracting him long enough so that he can return the favor from earlier. Coming in fast with a hard-hitting double axe handle straight into Piccolo's back, sending him flying straight into the center of the arena, creating a massive explosion. Krillin landed mere feet away, looking down into the crater that he had made, gazing at the banged up and bruised Piccolo, who stared back at him in anger and fury. Krillin then said, See, I told you. 
flat on your ass. And here I thought you were supposed to be stronger than King Piccolo. So much for revenge, eh, Junior? Ah, damn you! Piccolo struggled to his feet before leaping out of the crater, although it was clear to tell that he was very injured and running low on stamina. Calm down there. Look, how about this? If you surrender now, we'll call it here. I mean, your family killed me, I've beaten you, so no hard feelings. Piccolo stared back at him with anger and disgust in his eyes, not even for a moment believing such BS. Of course, Krillin picked up on this and just continued on. Look, I'm serious here. This could be a chance for you to start anew. Be something more than a tool of revenge that your father wanted you to be. What do you say? Piccolo was completely dumbfounded. In fact, not just dumbfounded, he was entirely speechless. He couldn't even believe what was happening today. Him being bested first of all, and not only that, but also now being shown mercy by someone such as this? Someone who he thought beneath him. He screamed out, No! I will not stand for this, you damn human! I'll make you pay! Piccolo begins to charge up again, his power flaring as he starts to grow larger, larger, and larger still, getting even bigger than the arena itself. Many people in the crowd began to scream out in terror at the sheer massive size of this monster that they were seeing, including people like Tiani Yamcha, who were basically <laughs> screaming out from the sidelines for Krillin to get out of there. But then Krillin looked over to them, hearing the concerns they were having for him, and he basically told them to calm down and that it would be okay. Even Goku looked towards them and reassured them, essentially saying that Krillin could handle it. <laughs> Piccolo, laughing, now bellowed in a thunderous voice. Tremble in fear, you pathetic worm, for now I am unstoppable. <laughs> I'll crush you. And then, he looked over to Goku. You're next. So arrogant, Krillin began to reply. And here I thought that you will have learned this lesson already. The bigger they are? Suddenly in a flash, Krillin vanished from sight, instantly moving faster than anyone could track, leaving Piccolo once again dumbfounded. But within that very same instant, he suddenly felt a sharp pain in his stomach, spitting up copious amounts of blood and vile. Krillin began to become visible again, and he could be seen punching Piccolo straight into the gut. Piccolo buckled over, falling down to one knee, holding his abdomen, trying to catch his breath clearly struggling. The harder they fall! Krillin shouted in triumph. Piccolo was heavily exhausted and now barely able to breathe. Still, he wasn't ready to give in just yet. Stretching out one of his arms quickly towards Krillin, hoping that just maybe with him still being at the size, he could use it to his advantage. Reaching out, he opened up his hand, trying to seize Krillin within it. But the young fire, thinking quickly on his feet, used a quick flash of Kaioken, allowing him to completely avoid Piccolo's grasp. Above him now, he charged up a giant key he charged up a giant key disc, letting it hover over his hand, prepared to finish this battle once and for all. This sent Piccolo into a panic. He quickly stretched out the other arm, opening his hand to try and seize Krillin, which he managed to dodge without fail, throwing the disc, screaming out as he did it. It went careening towards Piccolo, leaving him no way to dodge it. But right, at, but right as it seemed that the disc would take off the Namekian's head, it actually broke into two separate smaller discs that ended up chopping off both of Piccolo's arms. He screamed out, shouting up to the heavens, a guttural scream, as Krillin rushed in, not giving him any opportunity to recuperate, and ended this battle by kicking him in the face and launching him out of the ring. Piccolo returning to his normal size as he fell towards the ground. Krillin lands gracefully back down to the ring, throwing up his fist into the air proclaiming victory as the crowd goes wild, singing his praises and shouting his name. His friends somehow could still actually be heard. His friends somehow could still be heard the most. Standing there in shock and awe as they cheered on their friend. Goku and Kami were also some of the most supportive people, both smiling, truly proud of the fighter. But Krillin, although happy, developed quite a somber expression onto his face, thinking about to a conversation he was having with Piccolo just moments earlier. For he knew it wasn't really Piccolo's fault that he was the way he was, that it was the influence of his father and that darkness being a part of his nature that corrupted what seemingly could have been quite the upstanding individual. So Krillin was thinking to himself, expressing the idea that maybe if he was just given a chance, things could have turned out differently. So he actually goes over to the unconscious body of Piccolo and ends up restoring his strength, using the method of sharing a portion of his own key in order to achieve this. 
Once he woke up, Piccolo was still, of course, immediately hostile and angry. But Krillin then explains the situation and expresses his feelings, basically giving Piccolo some good old-fashioned talk no jutsu. Now don't worry, Piccolo is not going to just be suddenly changing his ways randomly on the spot like that. However, I can say that this will indeed have an effect on him going forward in the future. Now as far as the tournament goes, there indeed are some changes here, some bigger than others. For instance, the stadium isn't blown up this time around, and Kami actually does end up revealing himself during the competition. As far as the fights themselves, just sub in Krillin for Piccolo. But to basically go over all of them here, Shin vs Yamcha, or i.e. Kami vs Yamcha, is a complete wash of course in Shin's favor. Although, Yamcha does actually do better than he did in canon, being a little bit stronger here. And in fact, the match is mostly focused around Kami actually teaching Yamcha a bit more than he did in canon also. The next being Ten and Goku, which is just another stump. Goku barely even broke a sweat on this one. In fact, he doesn't even have to remove his weight in clothing. Yes, Tien is disappointed, as well as his fans, but he does swear to get stronger so that next time he can come out on top. Now we have Shin vs Krillin or Kami vs Krillin, which wasn't in fight at all. In fact, Kami just wanted to thank the young man for his help in dealing with Piccolo and express how amazed he was at the level of skill that Krillin possessed. He bowed to him and he bowed to him as a sign of respect. And due to Krillin's advanced key sense and spiritual awareness, he already knew exactly who this was that was thanking him, but decided not to say anything. Instead, with a smile returning the bow. Kami then promptly considered the match after. Lastly, we go to the final match between Krillin and Goku. And of course, I know you guys are all expecting it to be one-sided, but whereas yes, Krillin does boast a raw power advantage, it doesn't mean that it's a guaranteed victory. Goku does have the techniques and same potential to keep him in the game, using moves and techniques that he has picked up and learned over the course of the last three years. In fact, during the last video, I basically mentioned to you guys that I would be introducing new techniques for Goku to be able to utilize here that he would have learned over the last three years. Or if he already knew the technique, that he was going to be able to utilize it here and maybe even utilize a perfected version of it. Techniques such as the Solar Flare, the Demon Explosive Way, and even, follow me on this one, the Thunder Shock Surprise. And for a good portion of the early parts of this fight, the tactics involved with these techniques as implemented by Goku were indeed able to keep Krillin on his toes. Although after a while, as in the same with Piccolo, it was becoming clear that Krillin was indeed winning. Goku, never being known as the type of guy to just give up when the odds are stacked against him, still ends up pulling out all the stops just to try to gain an edge. But nevertheless, he would still have to do something drastic if he even wanted a chance at a potential victory. And that's exactly what he does. Using another Solar Flare, he manages to catch Krillin off guard. Goku then charges up a super advanced Kamehameha wave. The advanced version of this technique that he used originally in the tournament is actually this time around a key sinking technique. It essentially locks onto the target or individual's key and is able to track them no matter where they go. But of course, like in the original, this still isn't your run-of-the-mill Kamehameha wave. In fact, it is a Super Kamehameha wave, which we do know in the original still boasts quite the high power level. Only this time, it's even stronger, due to Goku's overall power level being much higher than it was in canon. In fact, if I had to rank it, I'd say that this attack would actually come up with a power level around 1290, which in fact, even Krillin, in his base form anyway, would have trouble with. So, as Krillin was outrunning this Kamehameha wave, Goku was planning his secondary attack, and this attack was truly his last resort. Goku was using Goku was in fact using his own life force, his own life force and the last reserves of his ki and powering them up into this last resort attack. And this attack is known as the Ozaru Fist. Now, to kind of put up a bit of a side here, I actually wanted to bring this technique back. Now, technically, I do not believe that this is an official name that has been given to this technique. But you guys basically do know this technique. In fact, it was the same technique that Goku used to finish off Demon King Piccolo. I just essentially had him keep the technique and actually master it and utilize it more. Especially for occasions like this where he has to use it as a last resort. And so over the last three years, he has trained us and has made it even stronger than ever. In fact, it's even more powerful than the Super Kamehameha Wave, the advanced version that he's using against Krillin right now. But you guys will get to see in a moment as to what I mean by that. Once he was prepared and finished off charging up this attack, he was towards Krillin. 
managing to catch him off guard as Krillin had just finished catching the Kamehameha wave and finally managing to disperse it, although it was a little bit of struggle because again he was in his base form, only to turn around and be directly hit into the gut with what looked like a giant monkey around Goku's fist. Coughing up blood, he was completely rocked by this attack, but still aiming to win, Krillin grit his teeth and yelled out, Kaioken times two! The burst alone of activating that level was enough with sheer force, with sheer force and pressure to push Goku back, giving Krillin a desperate momentary reprieve. Now he ends up using this to his advantage as he charges towards Goku and basically gives him a little bit of a love tap. And with the Kaioken times two, there is no way Goku is going to even remotely be able to contest this and he's definitely not getting up. Krillin sends him directly into the ground, knocking him out completely. He lands and is declared the winner. So congratulations to Krillin, he has officially won a tournament. Sometime later after the tournament, everyone meets back up and gives their congratulations. Some of them are still quite in shock that Krillin was as strong as he was. They just kept getting way too hype around him. Of course, kind of picking on him a little bit, you know, especially people like Yamcha, you know, doing the whole self-proclaimed, now Krillin is the strongest in the universe and all of that. Although Krillin is a bit bashful, he's still, you know, kind of like, okay, this is nice. I can accept that, which is fine. Again, I made Krillin a bit more confident than he would have been originally. So whereas he is still somewhat shy, and of course, you know, because we like that bit of Krillin's personality, he is much more confident and willing to kind of like be a little bit more braggish if you will <laughs> and will to accept the glory for you know his achievements a bit more than he was in canon however goku wasn't really praising him in the same way that people like yamcha and tien were he was too busy trying to bay krillin essentially if he could teach him you know certain techniques like the kyle or whatever he called it of which it turns out krillin was more than happy to oblige but unfortunately for him Accepting such a request may put him in a bit of a tough spot, as when he looked back at his other friends, it would seem that Goku would definitely not be alone. I guess we should start calling him Master Krillin. Krillin-sama. Sensei Krillin. Something along the lines of that. All right, guys, that was part two. So what if Krillin trained with King Kai after being killed by Tambourine? Now, I'm so super sorry that this took forever to come out. <laughs> Um, definitely the next part is going to be coming out way earlier than this. It's just that, you know, I've been so busy, you know, and then all the stuff that was going on in the real world. I'm not sitting here trying to make excuses. I definitely should have been had it out. Again, I, I already kind of like had it. I already had it like done. But when I went back to do my process, there were certain things I want to edit, other things I want to add in. And of course, you know, as I'm learning, uh, I'm basically changing up my style a little bit more too. And I'm also, you know, pro just progressing and growing uh, since doing these what ifs are still pretty new to me. Uh, but I hope you guys enjoyed it, and yeah, like I said, part three will dev, well, uh, part three will definitely be coming out <laughs> uh, much sooner than uh, part two did. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace. And to all my gummy knights, new and old, just remember, this is a man's world, but it would be nothing without his brain and his bronze. And lying is indeed the most fun that a woman can have without taking off her clothes. Good night. I've been announcement to make It seems the artists these days are not who you think So we'll pick back up on that on another page